Hi, welcome back. Uh, before we get started with this array demo, I wanted to show you these four files. These are included in your packet, uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4.png. I just put these in the same directory as the file. Uh, you can put them in an image directory, but then you'll have to change the link if you want to do that, and I'll show you where to do that. But I wanted to make you aware of these four files that go with array.html. All right, so let's get started. This is a very simple piece of HTML. The complexity is in the JavaScript. And before we get started, I wanted to show you how it works. So here is the file. I have these uh, four images. Really, there's only three right now. But I've got them loaded up into a JavaScript array. I can go through the array. I'm, I have some code that allows me to stop going through the array if I've reached the end or the beginning of the array. In other words, these are checking for array out of bound errors, which would be a good thing. I have some stuff to add an element and remove an element that we're going to check out here in just a moment. So let's go back to the file and go through it. So we have a button, uh, actually a couple of them, and they are here and here on either side of the image area, the image tag, and they're just to change the image. And I've just, I could have used, uh, images inside the buttons, but I'm just keeping it simple with little arrows, uh, less than, dash, dash, and uh, dash, dash, greater than. Both of them call the change image function, and change image negative one, change image positive one. So let's go ahead and look at the change image function. Change image has an offset, takes an offset, either one or negative one. One meaning change the image to the right in the array, uh, negative one meaning change the image to the left in the array. So before we can understand that, we need to understand the array. So I have set up uh, three global variables, array of images, current index, and image tag. Image tag is convenient. Uh, image tag is going to be document get element by ID, the image. This is the element that encloses this image. It is a a uh, HTML IMG image tag. So it's down here, image ID image, alt of one. Uh, this could be an alt of image, what, uh, what, what have you. This image is being populated in the add event listener for DOM content loaded uh, by first of all, setting up an array of images. The way we set up an array is simply with square brackets and then the things we want in the array. All of these elements in the array don't have to be of the same type, but the, an array is indexed by integers. It is a zero-based collection of integral indexed objects. So we have one ping, two ping, and three ping currently in the array. And then I want to take that source attribute of the image tag and set it to array images sub-zero. So what that does is it goes out and finds one.png and makes that the source. The source of an image tag is a string containing the name of the file, and that's how this works. Current index then gets set to zero, and then document get element by ID, uh, D array, enter HTML, is the array of images. And if I look at D array, I can see that it's a paragraph, and it is just containing the images that are currently in the array. And this is important when we add an element here in just a moment. So the change image method, the change image function here, takes an offset, either one or negative one. A switch can limit to a certain number of cases. If I pass change image two or negative 19 or something like that, that would push my array out of bounds, the default case in the switch is going to catch that and alert bad argument of offset to change image function. Otherwise, the case is negative one or one, and then I do things and break. The problem with the switch statement in this case is that these two lines are exactly the same in both cases. All we're doing with the switch is in case negative one, if the current index is greater than zero, in other words, the bottom of the array, 
And in case one, if the current index is less than one less of the length of the array, since the array is zero based. So this is arguably too wordy. In other words, I have things that I could factor out here. This code down here factors out the offset calculation, and it also catches only negative one and one, but it's a little bit less readable. So if I delete the commenting here, you can see that this if statement, where current index greater than zero and offset equal to negative one, or current index less than array images length minus one and offset equal to one, then go ahead and do those two lines. Uh, like I said, this is less readable. The switch is more readable. And really, it's going to depend, what you use is going to depend uh, on what you prefer or, and or, how your shop prefers you to do it. So here we factor out the common code in the case statements, uh, making it less readable. Here we don't factor the common code out, making it more readable. So take your pick. Uh, but the syntax of the switch statement is given here. It really doesn't get any more complex than this. All right, so the next thing is we have an add element and remove element function. Arrays are really cool in JavaScript. We don't have to know their length beforehand, and we can add and remove elements from them. A push will add an element to the end of the array. A pop will pop off the last element of the array. So arrays in JavaScript are really good for things like stacks. We can push and pop onto the top of the array. So all we're doing with the push is we're going to push on 4.ping and then uh, change that list in D array. And all we're doing with the pop is we're popping off the top and then again changing the list in D array. Now I could factor this out into a separate function and then every time I change the list I would call that function and that would be the right way to do it. But I was lazy today. So you can make that change if you want. So let's go ahead and check out the adding and removing of things. If we add an element, we see that DRay is now four elements long, and I can go through all four elements, and I can't still can't go off the top of the array because I'm checking for a array length minus one. And then if I go backward through the array, uh, I didn't take out a piece of, uh, of code there, of debug code, but you can see that I can't go off the end either. So here we are, when we're going down, we just remove this alert. And I'm sorry I didn't do that, but now it's saved. And we'll double check that, reload, and uh, if we add an element, then we can go up and down, and we don't run off the end of the array going either way. If we remove, we'll remove back down to three. Uh, we notice that four got removed, but it didn't update this. That probably should have been done we can continue to removing all the way down to there, and then we still can't overrun the array because the code is written such that uh, overruns are impossible. In other words, we're limiting to the current index greater than zero in the negative one case and the current index less than the length of the array minus one in the one case. All right, play with this file play with arrays. They're really cool. Anytime you have a list of things that you want to maintain, like a list of images as we've seen here, uh, maybe a list of document elements that you want to populate in certain ways, arrays are the right tool for the job in those kinds of situations. Thank you very much.